Let's um, open our Bibles to Galatians 3, 26. And uh, I want to speak on the goodness of the Word. The goodness of the Word. And I do want to welcome all of our viewers who are out there. And it's so good to have you. This is Tuesday. And uh, this is our devotional time at Southwest Radio Ministries. And we're going to be speaking about the goodness of the Word. You know, God is good all the time, no question about it. Uh, that does not mean that life will always be easy. Um, it certainly does not mean that there is no evil in the world. Um, and it certainly does not mean that human beings are not free. God does not coerce people to do good things. So while God is good all the time, He's also good to us in the sense that He gives us freedom and liberty to do bad. And so we need to remember that we do live in a fallen world. There are things that are broken. Uh, there are things that don't work. Um, there are very pretty mushrooms that are very deadly. Okay? There's a very pretty snake. Uh, we used to have them in the Florida Keys. It's only about that big. It's called the coral snake. It's beautiful, but it's very deadly. Um, so God is good, and he's good all the time, but that doesn't mean that if we have faith in a good God that we'll always be happy, nothing bad will happen, there'll be no wars, because people are free to do the evil or the good that's in their hearts. You know, Jesus did say in Matthew chapter 6, verse 10, he told us that we are to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, why are we to pray that? Because God's will is not being done on earth at the present time. It will one day in the future. We call it the millennial age. So we still, after saying all of that, and um, sometimes if you make a statement and you don't clarify it, uh, you know, if I just say God is good, everything, oh, that's wonderful. If I get saved, I'll never have any problems. You know, if I follow Jesus and make him my Lord, um, just love him, go to church, uh, give a portion of my money to the Lord, God is good, life will be easy. No, God is good, but there's a lot of other stuff in there. But I do want to back up to the statement, God is good. He really is good. And there is goodness in God's Word. As we look at God's Word, there is goodness there. Let's uh, read Galatians 3, uh, verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Let's just back up to uh, verse 28. I want to focus a little bit on something that we're reminded of. Once again, in verse 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. Okay. Now, Paul is not denying that some people are Jews and some people are Gentiles, but he's saying that there is no distinction with regards love, okay, with regards redemptive blessings. And then he says there is neither bond nor free, and he doesn't mean there's nobody who, who is slaves and, and, or free, no. He means that God does not discriminate, okay, between the bond or the free. And then it says there is neither male nor female. He's not denying that there are men and women, but he's saying redemptively, the way God looks at us, his love for us, um, the blessings he gives to us. It's not dependent on your, whether you're a Jew or a Greek, whether you're a bond uh, or free, whether you're a man or a woman. And then it says, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So he's speaking about redemptive privileges in Jesus Christ. And then in verse 29, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. You know, um, the Word of God is good, 
in the sense that if we follow the Word, we will enjoy the abundant life. Okay, if we believe the Word, um, if we obey the Word. For example, in Ephesians uh, chapter 6, Paul says, Children, obey your parents, that it will go well with you, and you will live long on the earth. Okay, so because God is good, His Word is good, and he reminds us that if we follow his word and live according to his word, there will be good benefits. So he says, you know, if you obey your parents, if you don't fight them, if you don't run away from home, um, if, you know, when they tell you, hey, don't get drunk, don't, don't take drugs, don't run with the wrong crowd, if you obey them, all of the evils that come upon people who do get drunk and who do take drugs and who do run with the wrong crowd, uh, all of those evils will fall upon you. But if you obey your parents, as the scripture says, uh, you will live long on the earth and in the land that the Lord gives to you. And I think it's really interesting that in Timothy, first and second Timothy, and also in Titus, when the Bible speaks about sound doctrine, now when we think of sound doctrine, I know in my mind I think of sound theology. And it, it does mean that. But literally, if you translate the word sound, it means healthful, healthful doctrine, okay? Good teaching, getting in the word, uh, getting under the sound of the word, being in a good church where sound doctrine is preached, that is actually literally healthful teaching. So sound doctrine is healthful. It's good for you. We need to uh, remember that. And so uh, if we depart from the Word of God, either individually or a family or a nation, what happens? We become morally bankrupt. Okay, nations can become morally bankrupt. Uh, the scripture says, righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So once again, we're reminded that there's a goodness in the word of God. I think in America, uh, we are facing some national problems that we don't seem to be able to solve. Um, I was doing in, in preparing for um, a Mother's Day message at the Chinese church in Oklahoma City. Um, I realized that, you know, America spends billions of dollars on education, and yet it doesn't mean we have a lot of educated people out there. They may be smart, okay, they might be able to do math problems, and they know how to use computers and so forth, but they are not really educated. Todd Friel um, has a new DVD out, it's called Untethered. And um, he shows by going to a college campus, a couple of college campuses, how um, far America has fallen, and especially America's college age, okay? He, he asked a whole bunch of ridiculous questions. He goes up to a student and says, uh, you know, he, he's over there, and I don't know if you've ever seen Todd Friel, but he's a tall guy, he's got a big mouth, he looks like one of the bad people in Batman. I don't even know that, but he's, he's a character. But he's really a great guy. He's sound, loves, loves young people, loves the Lord, and so forth. And he says, look, he says, um, see that sign over there? It says, no pets. Then he asks the student, he says, now, if I believe I'm a dog, should I go there? And the student says, well, of course not. You're a dog. Really? <laughs> That's what... Uh, that's what postmodernism is doing to us. It's really messed us up. Or he says, okay, we go to this uh, faraway island, and the people there have the habit of smashing the heads of little girls. Does that bother you? And many of the students say, well, no, that's their culture. What? That's their culture, so it shouldn't bother you? So that's why the DVD is called Untethered. We've been untethered. We've been cut free from our mooring. Um, it, the, there are many examples there, but he goes up. He's talking about um, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And he asks this uh, student, okay, is there any way that 2 plus 2 might equal 7? 
And the guy says, yeah, it really might. Now, Donna would like that. Now, you wouldn't like that as an accountant, right? It would be problematic. So the guy's arguing with Todd Friel, and Todd Friel says, by the way, what's your major? And his major is engineering. <laughs> <laughs> we got problems. I'm glad you don't believe that two plus two is seven. So I want to point out that God is good and his word is good. Now, let's talk a little bit um, about how the word of God um, affects our culture and our values. Um, if, if we apply the word of God to our culture, and if we allow our values to seep into our culture, we will have a, a better culture. However, going back to uh, the 1850s, there was a man by the name of Charles Darwin. And um, he wrote a book. It's called, it was immensely popular. I think um, it came out in 1859. And I think the day that it came out, all 2,000 copies were sold out. Can you imagine? Now, here's the book. The Origin of the Species by Means of Natural Selection and the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Preservation of Favored Races? That guy was a racist. He was, okay? He was. Uh, Darwinism, evolutionary thought, um, is a racist uh, ideology. Okay, if you look at Galton and some of the ones, uh, if you look at Planned Parenthood, you look at Margaret Sanger, what they believed. They were racist because they believed that we all somehow evolved from primeval uh, slime. According to Darwin, uh, the key is the survival of the fittest. Okay, uh, We're in a, a war. Uh, there is a war between human beings and our environment, and only the strongest survive. Well, according to Darwin, that's why men are better than women. Okay, just and I'm not saying that. I'm saying according to Darwin. Because men are smarter. Men are stronger. Uh, because men go to battle. Um, only the strongest men survive. The weakest ones are killed in battle. Whereas the women are homebodies. They stay home. Um, they never have any struggles, which, of course, if you've had a baby, <laughs> that's not at all true. But anyhow, that was his reasoning. And um, it's, it's interesting how Darwin, um, with this kind of a view, said the intelligence gap between men and women was so great that the male needs to be one species and the woman needs to be another species. Now, how do you like that? Not too good. And that's certainly not biblical, okay? Um, they, uh, Darwin had a different uh, word for uh, men and women. Um, Darwin believed that female evolution occurred more slowly than male evolution, and so he wrote, a woman was, in essence, a stunted male. Close quotes, okay? Now, hey, this is the view that's taught in public schools, okay? This craziness. The public schools will, moder will ridicule the Bible. The public schools will ridicule creationism. The public schools will ridicule a literal view of the creation. We're scientific. We believe in evolution. Give me a break. That, that evolutionary view is at the root of so many of our problems today. It's at the root of racism. You know, there's only really only one race. What race is that? The human race. There's only one race. Now, there are some minor differences, skin color, style of uh, hair, not style of hair, the texture of hair, eye shape, and so on and so forth. There's only um, one race. So, Darwin was a racist, and uh, I guess he was a male chauvinist. Uh, here's what he wrote about uh, women. He wrote that a constant companion is nice, someone who will feel interested in me, an object to be loved and played with better than the dog anyhow, and someone to take care of the house. Did you know, ladies, you're a little bit better than the dog? Kind of be, I mean, you, you think, hey, this is the prevailing ideology in America. It's unbelievable. Now, you know, if, if they want to teach Darwinism in public school, 
they need to point out some of these things about uh, Charles Darwin and about evolution. Uh, Dr. Larry Bergman wrote a book, it's tremendous, a great big book. It's titled The Dark Side of Darwinism. Darwinism is dark because it comes from that desire to leave God out of the picture. That's the reason why all 2,000 copies of The Origin of the Species was sold out. Man was looking for an explanation to our origins that leaves God out of the picture. We don't want God in the picture. God gets too nosy. God talks about sin. These preachers talk about sin. These preachers talk about judgment, talk about hellfire. Oh, we don't want to hear that. We want to know how we came into being without God. We just evolved from primeval slime. Well, okay, you think like that. You believe that. You teach boys and girls in high school, junior high school, in college, that kind of nonsense, and you will have the mess that our country is in, that the whole world is in at the present time. So for some strange reason, Charles Darwin is an untouchable. You can't criticize him. A Chinese doctor told me this. He said, you know, uh, in uh, China, we can criticize Darwin, but we can't criticize America, uh, the government. He says, in America, you can't criticize Darwin, but you can criticize the government all you want. At least the Chinese, who come from an atheistic uh, ideology, although many of them, millions of them, are being saved, they realize that important fact. You know, Darwin was not a scientist. A lot of people, well, he's scientific, you know. If we believe in the Bible, that's not scientific. Well, Darwin was not a scientist. He did not know about microbiology. He did not know about DNA. He didn't have any idea of DNA. In fact, the average uh, boy or girl who's a junior or a senior in high school probably knows more science than Charles Darwin did. Who or what was Charles Darwin? Charles Darwin was a theologian and a philosopher who hated God and he hated the word of God. The point I want to make is that God's word is good. God has given us his word because he loves us. A lot of people say, ah, the word of God, I can't do this, can't do that. But listen, the word of God keeps you pointed in the right direction. And when we miss the right direction, when we fall off to the left or to the right, we have a Savior if we believe in Him. His precious blood has washed us from our sins. His Holy Spirit comes to dwell within to give us power, to cleanse us within, to help us do His work, to help us be involved in ministry. God is good, and the Word of God is good. And I pray that all of our listeners today, all of our viewers, everyone here, that this will be kind of the day when... Um, we will remember the goodness of the Word of God. And by the way, we've got Mother's Day coming up uh, this Sunday, uh, 2017. I guess it's May the 14th. Let's remember how important mothers are. Let's remember how important fathers are. Let's remember how important the home is. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your Word. I am truly humble that... Um, You've given me the privilege of teaching it and preaching it, and I'm sure all of the other uh, men and those Sunday school teachers who share it, um, I, I pray that all of us would have a uh, refreshing touch from your Holy Spirit today to just say, Hallelujah, Lord God, thank you for the blessed Bible, the Word of Life, the Book of Life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.